And right now, it is time to check sports. Let's bring in Mike Kazi. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Hey, I love the new Jet uniforms. Uh, yeah. Unless they had the real old-fashioned Jet uniforms, I love. I like these. I think this is a good change for them. Not a big uniform guy. Well, the, the reason I like the change for them is they've they're trying to shake. They're trying to just create a new team, you know, and not be stuck in the. So we'll see what happens. Uniforms don't make the team. The player in it does. I know, but geez, remember when they, they took, could play in Haynes white T-shirts. Remember when they took the NY off the New York Giants helmets? Oh my God, people just went crazy, and just went to Giants. But like the, I said, and I'm not a big uniform guy. Yeah, well, I don't think you're uniform at all. <laughs> I don't think I'm uniform. No, nope. anyway, that means nothing to me. All that is is another another avenue to sell sell things to uh, foolish people. All right, there you go. Ding, 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 ding. All right, well, now, where do you want to go in sports? Because I went to bed early last night, and I'm feeling really great this morning, and I really don't know what happened in sports. Well, it looked like the Skankies were going to be in trouble yesterday. They were down 3 nothing after the first inning, um, but they managed to come together and beat the double-A Baltimore Orioles 8-4. So a win for the Yankees yesterday, and the Mets, their home opener, couldn't have been any worse. I heard they got that. beat four nothing. I heard that. I heard that. Jeez. They were four hit. Washington only got five, but they put a couple runs across the dish, and the Mets couldn't do anything, and they got beat four nothing. They're blaming the difference of having to play uh, Wednesday night and then having to play one o'clock yesterday afternoon and this and that. Well, you know, it's an excuse. I hate four that. nothing. You know, uh, no excuse. You know, I love City Field, but I hate the out, I ha- hate the way the outfields configure the walls. It reminds me of a pinball game. I don't know. I think it's good. I, I hated the cookie cutter ballparks. I like the differences in the ballparks, like with um, Wrigley Field with the Ivy and Yankee Stadium with Death Valley in left field that was 457 feet, and uh, all the nooks and crannies of, of Fenway Park. I think it's good. I don't like the cookie cutter things. Uh, I like the Houston ballpark, but I'm glad they got rid of that. They had that rise in the outfield. Remember that? Yeah, I like that. I thought it was good. It's, a, it's something different. <laughs> All right. Here we go again. <laughs> Point hey, count- that's why they make vanilla and chocolate. Point counterpoint this morning. We'll see if we can go. Well, no, I do. I, I, like, have- I like the changes in the ballpark. See, I happen to like Fenway Park, and I happen to like Wrigley. Rig- Rig- because Rig- you're Rig- a pro. Yeah. You're supposed to be able to handle all these things. Yeah. A 12-year-old kid could play in a cookie-cutter park. If you're a pro, you have to know how to play walls. You have to know how to judge things. Remember up in Fenway Park how <coughs> Carl Yastrzemski was a master of the green monster? Yeah. And, uh, that, that was just a fear of teams coming in, how to play the green monster. I and, mean, that, that, that's, that's a home field right. advantage. That's Death, what you should have. Death Valley and Yankee Stadium was always great when something so, when a wall got by somebody. Oh, that was it. That was it. Not only got by somebody, if somebody hit one in the gap, they ran forever. And they had those, remember they had those drains? And the monuments were in play in center field. Monuments were in play. Remember the big drains they had to drain the field? No, I don't remember yeah, that. Yeah, they had, they, had, they had, not big, but they were like uh, a foot and a half to two feet around. That's how Mickey Mantle hurt his knee the first time. Got yeah, when Joe DiMaggio went and pull up. Yeah. Well, anyways. So but now, I like it. I think it's. I think it's something that you know is is good. It, it adds more to the game. They want to add more to the game. That adds more to the game. All right. Where else were we going sports before? We um, Red Sox continue to slide. They got beat up yesterday by Oakland seven three. So I think the Red Sox are two and five or two and six to start the season. It's it's uh, an anti of last year. That's for sure. When everything went their way this year. They're going to have to fight from behind. All right. Uh, do you want to go to racing now or any other sports? Sure. Yeah, let's go. Because there's a lot we of got racing. Three right? tracks to cover. Yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Mike. It's all that yours. was pitiful. <laughs> it was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Speaking of pitiful, let's start with the worst first. Santa Anita. This is the worst Santa Anita derby I've ever seen in my life. Nine, there's six horses in this race. It's it's a god awful race. Is that because the trainers are afraid to put people in? I'm I'm guessing so. I mean, it's terrible. I mean, no, nobody's afraid of game winner because 
game winner went out to the Rebel and got beat, and they're not. This, don't listen to the fact that they're ducking game winner. Um, this is a bad, bad race. It's a two horse race. It's it's a race between game winner and the five Instagrad who shipped west again um, after running third in the Gotham. So two horse race, six horse field, no betting interest. Who cares? That's that's the that's the San Anita Derby. What a shame to think of what, what came out of the San Anita Derby the last couple of years to see what it came became this year. That's that's just a shame. Um, from here we're going to go to Aqueduct. We're expecting some rain tonight. Um, by the time these races run late tomorrow afternoon, I'm expecting a fast track. Uh, the ninth race tomorrow is the Grade One Carter, six, seven furlongs on the main track. Um, you got a favorite on the outside, even money morning line. The eight World of Trouble for Jason Service. Um, I think World of Trouble is going to have a World of Trouble tomorrow. Um, Vino Rosso ran a really nice race in the Stiney in early March. Uh, he, this horse is undefeated over Aqueduct three for three. I think Vino Rosso. If you get anywhere near the morning line price for this horse, you have to go with him. He danced all the big dances last year, the Kentucky Derby, the Belmont, the Jim Dandy, the Travers. Um, this horse is battle-tested, um, c- cuts back to seven furlongs. This horse has only been one turn twice in his life and won both of them. Um, coming off a nice bullet work down at Palm Beach Downs. Um, all systems ro- go for Vino Rosso. Um, all systems no for me for World of Trouble. Uh, this horse won last both times at 20 cents on a dollar um, on sloppy tracks at Tampa and, and, and Gulfstream Park. Um, other than that, lightly raced on the dirt. I, I don't like that horse at even money. But I'd li- I do like Vino Rosso. And another horse that I like a lot is the six horse, Timber Ghost, son of Ghost Zapper. Um, this horse is lightly raced for a four-year-old and can be any kind of horse. Um, running six and seven furlongs last year at Saratoga and Belmont, came up a winner. Um, got some time off, came back at Gulfstream after three months, ran a nice second and an optional claimer. Nice work coming into this race from Belmont. 20, 30 to 1 morning line for Jimmy Jerkins. Got to use this horse. So two horses I'm going to use in the car are the two Vino Rosso and the six Timber Ghost. Uh, brings us to the Wood Memorial, which is the 10th race, 6 o'clock post time. Very good race. 11 horses, a lot of, lot of different ways to go here. The one way I'm going is I'm going to go down to the inside. Um, the one horse, Tax, who I picked in the Withers, comes back in this race, gets the rail again. Um, I like this horse tomorrow from the rail. The two, Tacticus, who I picked in the Tampa Bay Derby, who won it 8-1, to one, comes back north for this race for Billy Mott. And the four, Hakaya, who I picked in the Gotham and won. So three horses that I picked recently who have all won come back in this race. Um, the race, the way I figure it out, Tacticus is going to get a nice pace set up in front of him, and I think this horse has all the right to run it down. The other horse that's going to be a little closer and turn it on late is Tax. So I'm going to bet all three of them in an exacta box, and whoever has the best odds between the one Tax and the two Tacticus, that will be my win bet at post time. So a 1-2-4 box and either the one or the two to win in the 10th tomorrow at Aqueduct. And then the Keeneland, the three-year-old race, is the Bluegrass. Um, like I said, this is a decent race, too. you got 14 showing up in here as opposed to the, what you see in Santa Anita. Um, there's 14 horses in here. Ten, to, ten of them are 10 to 1 or more. And two of them, four of them are favorites. I'm going to toss a lot of horses here. Um, after watching the Florida Derby last week, anything that's coming out of the Fountain of Youth and ran back in the Florida Derby ran awful. Um, I got two horses coming out of the Fountain of Youth in this race, and one's the favorite, the two, Vacoma, and the other one is the three, Signal Man. Both of them are getting the ditch. Uh, Coat of Honor, Bourbon War, none of them horses ran in the Florida Derby at all, didn't pick up their legs at all. So I- I'm going against these horses here. Um, three horses I'm looking at in the, in the uh, bluegrass tomorrow. Uh, one is the eight, Win, Win, Win. Uh, this horse ran third behind Tacticus in the Tampa Bay Derby. Um, was five wide, moved a little late. Um, Ortiz back for the mount. This horse could give a real good account of himself in this race with a 7-2 to morning line. Another horse I like here who got totally wiped out in the Florida Derby, the six-horse Dream Maker, who was 3-1 to one that day, comes back in the bluegrass tomorrow with a 12-1 to one morning line. Uh, prior to that disappointing effort in the Tampa Bay Derby, this horse won by eight lengths 
going a, a mile and a sixteenth at fairgrounds. Um, has really two good works coming into this race. One at the fairgrounds, one over the Keeneland Strip. Twelve to one morning line for Mark Case here. Um, caveat emptor. Um, be careful of this horse. This horse could light it up. And another horse that I'm going to use that could light it up is a question mark. Is the one some like it hot brown. Um, for those who don't don't know it, a hot brown is a sandwich that's big in Kentucky, and this horse can be big in the bluegrass. Um, never been on the dirt. Um, bred very well for it. Tyler Gaffleone was riding lights out at the end of the Gulfstream meet. Um, this horse could very well surprise and be an upsetter in this race. And if this horse does run big on the dirt as he runs on the poly track, he could be a real big player in the Kentucky Derby scene. So in the bluegrass stakes tomorrow, I'm going with a 1-6-8 exact box in that 16-horse field. It's raining out in Kentucky last night and this morning. But, again, I think that the track should be fast by the time they get to this race tomorrow afternoon. So uh, three big three-year-old races this weekend. Uh, this, this is pretty much the end of it except for the uh, Arkansas Derby. Um, after this weekend, maybe we'll have a little bit better picture of what's going to happen on the first Saturday in May.